the UFC light heavyweight division encounter. takedown artist in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps in the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next. When the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. Well, pretty much every time out in the UFC, DC, this man has put on a striking clinic, and that is his methodology coming in here tonight. He'll try to keep the fight on. And that's why we tune in, right? That's why we tune in. We tune in to see guys that are dynamic. We tune in for the speed. We tune in for the knowledge of the striking game, the ability to set traps, the ability to find the jab, the ability to find the right hand, the right kick, the left kick, the knees, the elbows. He truly uses every weapon that he has in his arsenal to try and finish his opponents. You make one mistake, night's over. You cannot make mistakes against a guy that has the striking acumen yeah. of this guy right here. And the jab is not as underutilized a weapon as it was in MMA, say, five or seven years ago, but he's got as good a jab as anyone in the business, and that is where all of his striking flows off of. We'll see how it goes for him in this matchup tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 188 pounds. Fighting out of Mexico City, Mexico Garcia. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 186 pounds. Fighting out of Cap Springs, Maryland, USA, Magnifico. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Ready. All right, so two truly elite strikers here. We sat down with them on Thursday and asked them, any thoughts of taking this fight to the ground? They want to strike. Today. They want to strike. That's what got them to the show. That is the path that they are normally on. And tonight they get someone that allows them to fight in their comfort zone. They don't have to worry about defending takedowns. All they have to worry about is who can rely on their knowledge in the striking to carry them to victory. Oh, single collar tie here. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this young Slips the punch nicely there. Kick to the body now. That one won't land. Nice strike. You got to check these low leg kicks. Big right hook coming, it's blocked. Oh, beautiful straight left hand. Can't take many of those, you better check. Under three minutes now to go on the round. Right hand punches the clinch. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, misses with the jab. That was a thudding leg kick. Ooh, big shot lands. Throws the right hand there. Ooh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Nice strike to the midsection glances. Ah, 
out of range with that one. Slips the punch. Looking to land the leg kick now. Oh, significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. So we cross the 37. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Round two coming up next. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed that put him on wobbly legs and in survival mode. Luckily, he made it to the end of that round. that comes from him throwing that kick. Misses with the right hand. There's no tell on that leg kick. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting the combination. I mean, oh. If you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, order a combination, take the soda with your food, give him the right hand behind the jab, give him the hook behind the right hand. Jab, right hand. Whoa! Deuce hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. That Big knee lands there. That knee hurt. Well, missed on that one. Takedown defense holds up. Lands a nice straight punch there. Now we'll see if he can follow it up. What do you follow up a great punch like this with? I'm excited to see what happens. Got the single collar tie. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. Little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Strong hook lands. And another thwack there to the outside of that lead leg. Trying to hammer that lead leg. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Oh, and he caught the kick. Lands a glancing right hand upstairs. Oh, he got everything behind that kick. Went for the inside leg kick. Powerful leg kick lands. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Big kick lands. And plenty of time with which to work. 30 seconds to go in the round. Both fighters here continuing to try to get a more dominant position in the clinch. Getting fatigued in the process, I would think. It's very taxing to be chest to chest, a position we call 50-50 because nobody has the advantage. Who's going to be the one to find that one little area that they can expose to give them the slightest advantage? All right, now we check out some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about the display of striking? Just high level. I mean, you would think that we're watching a K-1-level kickboxing match opposed to being in the UFC. Both displayed great technical skills. Unbelievable strike. You ready to fight? You ready? Good. 
Way to hide that leg kick. Oh, and he lands a punch there. Good connection by him on that. Great connect, so fast, so accurate. And watch the ability to land from anywhere. the turtle in that kick. Punches in bunches, and he hasn't really shown any signs of slowing down here tonight. I'm not sure how much more his opponent can take. Spinning back fist. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Just out of range with that strike. Big knee there to the chest. Oh, straight right. Beautiful kick. Great upper body movement defensively. Slips another strike there. And offensively, he hasn't been a world beater, but defensively, he's been strong tonight. And that has to cause frustration for the opponent, not being able to hit a guy that you want to really put away. But that's a testament to the head and the activity and the awareness of this fighter. Defense. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Sound defensively blocks the shot. some replays now certainly a lot for our replay guys to work with in the truck this was a clinic tonight in terms of mixed martial arts acumen in every realm of the game a full-on display of all of his skills he did everything in this championship winning performance he used his wrestling he used his elbows he used his pace and pressure to really wear down his opponent so that he can get his hand raised Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 55 seconds of round number 3. Declaring the winner by knockout, Magnifico! Oh, there he is after a huge knockout win tonight. You going to the after party or what? I mean, I'm heading over there right now, John. I'm asking the producers, how soon can I get up? It's going to be a party over there. Not only because of the knockout, but that extra bonus check is going to be carried to the club tonight. champion but that wasn't enough folks he wanted to not only be in the video but he to actually call his own walkout dc the floor is yours they say at ea sports if it's in the game it's in the game i'm in the game and i'm also in the game as i call my own walk to the octagon it is a phenomenal thing to watch me walking to the octagon with my shirt touched with my pants my pants tucked in my socks you're talking about a fashion icon. You're talking about a guy in Daniel Cormier that looks and fights as well as anyone the U.S. has ever seen. And those are facts. And if you weren't here, what I would be saying is that most opponents seem to know what's coming, right? Can't stop. Can't stop. But we'll see if the man out of the blue corner can stop it here tonight. But Daniel Cormier is back in a big way. And as you just heard, I guess he's in the game. Well, we probably trot out the term well-rounded in modern-day mixed martial arts more than we should, but this fighter certainly fits the game. Oh, 110%. He can do everything inside the octagon. 
where he is most comfortable is inside of that eight-sided structure where most men are terrified of being. But for this gentleman, he only wants to be there. When you try to wrestle him, he's able to defend takedowns. If you dare stand and strike with him, he can knock you out. He's got all the tools necessary to become a UFC champion. His first martial art, mixed martial arts, <laughs> and that's not always the case. He believes that he should have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight fight. So more than 15 years, the gap in age between these two fighters, some differences in height and reach as well. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter holding a professional record on. 22 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 248 pounds. Fighting out of San Jose, California, Daniel D.C. Cormier! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 222 pounds. Anderson! And when the action begins, a referee in charge of Herb Dean. Herb Dean has drawn the assignment here. Ready. Ready to fight. All right, so here we go. The weight and the height gives way to the action right here on one side. Maybe the division's most well-rounded fighter taking on arguably the biggest submission threat in this division. Because he's such a great submission grappler, I believe that this is the most dangerous fight for him in the division. Wow. He needs to maintain his space, stay away from this guy at all costs, and force him to stand up with him. Oh, he landed a beautiful straight punch there, DC. He's got an edge in reach and certainly is making it count in this one. Big liver kick lands under the elbow. Single collar tie now. Sound defense there as he blocks the shot. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Anderson's got the tie clinch now. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pulling down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar. Oh, and there's the oh, and he finally gets the takedown now. So what do they say? It, try, try again. If if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. And this guy is the poster boy for that saying, because he shot many takedown attempts, and he finally has secured one. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's gonna be. Good work from the top here by Cormier. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. The ground and pound has been there all night. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. Oh, his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. And this might just be a matter of time. So the he tap comes shortly thereafter. He got the arm straight, right? The moment he was able to break the lock, John, his opponent was in trouble. Hip pressure up, opponent had to tap. And he tapped and he lives to fight another day, but a huge win for his opponent by submission tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, your winner by submission, and that's exactly how you put the rest of this division on notice. 
Looks like this guy could be a factor moving forward in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's going to stop this contest at 3 minutes, 56 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an arm bar, Daniel D.C. Well, what an incredible result here tonight as you see the winner there celebrating his victory by way of submission. And they put so much stock into finishing this fight. They felt like to really spin his career forward, they needed to not just win but get the finish, and they certainly got it tonight. They got the finish. He's such a terrific grappler. Every time he is on his back, he looks for submissions over and over again. Well, this young man is a really accomplished submission specialist, and sometimes fighters get offended when you call them a specialist, but most people know what he's trying to do in there, and to this point, no one's really been able to stop. John, he will try to pull guard. He yep. pulls guard anymore in the UFC at this point, but he understands that for him to be successful, the fight has to be in the grappling, in the jiu-jitsu. If he's able to extend these jiu-jitsu exchanges, he is the guy that is generally going to win. He understands position. He understands going from point A to point B. He always is the one controlling the under. Always has to bring just a knowledge of jujitsu that not many people can match. And you can be sure as he makes this walk tonight, he's thinking about just how quickly he can get this fight to the ground and utilize those aforementioned high-level submission skills. Well, pretty much every time out in the UFC, DC, this man has put on a striking clinic, and that is his methodology coming in here tonight. He'll try to keep the fight on. And that's why we tune in, right? That's why we tune in. We tune in to see guys that are dynamic. We tune in for the speed. We tune in for the knowledge of the striking game, the ability to set traps, the ability to find the jab, the ability to find the right hand, the right kick, the left kick, the knees, his elbows. He truly uses every weapon that he has in his arsenal to try and finish his opponent. You make one mistake, night's over. You cannot make mistakes against a guy that has the striking acumen yep. of this guy right here. And the jab is not as underutilized a weapon as it was in MMA, say, five or seven years ago, but he's got as good a jab as anyone in the business, and that is where all of his striking flows off of. We'll see how it goes for him in this matchup tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 20 wins, 11 losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Villa Velha, Espirito Santo, Brazil, Eric Silva! And now to meet his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 164 pounds. Fighting out of San Salvador, El Salvador, El Diablo. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of Herb Dean. Herb Dean has drawn the assignment here. Ready. All right, so here we are in Las Vegas, Nevada, inside the T-Mobile Arena. This has really become the UFC's home base here in Vegas since 2016, and you competed on that inaugural night. UFC 200 was a big one. I got to stand across the octagon from one of the greatest fighters of all time, Anderson Silva, but the roof was blown off at UFC 200. So many stars and legends competed on that night, I'm glad I was able to stand amongst them tonight. You get to make your mark on this great arena. Well, perhaps. Oh! And there comes the separation now. Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. Boy, Ty Plump. Trying to establish that jab once again. out of the break there after he had caught the leg. So he is really starting to put it all together now and clearly seems to have found the timing of his opponent. Silva's strike attempt there is blocked. Ooh, Superman punch lands. 
still unable to find that precise range with the high kick. Oh, single collar tie here. Oh. Well done to catch the kick. We'll see what he can do with it. Oh, John, that was so nice. What a beautiful kick. Might be a submission attempt here, Chad. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in the full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. Silva's back in full guard. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Well, you've got to be working off of your back. He's oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Got to be careful, Armbar. Now he's in no danger of a submission. How about that? He's like, you go here, <laughs> my arm's free, and now he's got plenty of room to operate here out of side control. Nicely Great done. Job. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here, and if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop him. But you can see him now start to gain posture, and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the pin. Oh, big shot lands. Got the single collar tie. Five minutes in the books. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. All right, round two. Oh, nice connection with that punch. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nicely done. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to his fullest. He throws his jab. He may throw the right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into those strikes. Clean left punch followed by the right. Oh, nice counter punch there as he continues to make good use of this advantage in reach. Oh, an elbow! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish. Oh! Oh! Huge right hand! Working off his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. All right, single collar tie now. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Nice oh. street punch. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. So many different things right now. Oh, nice jab. Oh! He's over. He's over. Oh, get him. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything landing. Both, both very powerful, very, very explosive. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish. Him. Oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Yeah! <laughs> you knew if he landed that weapon repeatedly, it could be a short night for his opponent. But that was just one perfectly placed strike that his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, 
and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay. It ends up a knockout, but this was really a striking clinic from the moment they touched him. I mean, a competitive fight that one guy finally found the shot that ended the fight. But both of these warriors displayed a ton of heart. One guy got the finish, but neither guy should be disappointed in their performance. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop for this contest at three minutes, 49 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout, El Diablo! Oh, there he is after a huge knockout win tonight. You going to the after party or what? I mean, I'm heading over there right now, John. I'm asking the producers, how soon can I get up? Because it's going to be a party over there. Not only because of the knockout, but that extra bonus check he's going to be carrying to the club tonight. Presenting the American Kickboxing Academy, the inimitable Khabib Nurmagomedov. And this guy makes his way to the Octagon DC. You run out of time setting up everything he's accomplished, but he always puts that status as an undefeated fighter and UFC champion on the line. He will do so again here tonight. The moment he walked in the AKA, you understood that there was something special about Nurmagomedov. He was a guy that was always listening, although he spoke no English, he was always listening and paying attention to try to learn and how to improve himself. And the moment he stepped foot in the gym, he was just open to each and every lesson, and now it's showing over the course of his UFC career. He was undefeated going into the UFC, and he has only built on that and become a champion, one of the most well-rounded fighters in all of the UFC. You know, your college wrestling teammates have told me when you showed up at Oklahoma State, you didn't speak English either. No, I didn't. It was all, it was all Southern Creole accent. It was all... It was all okay, my boy. <laughs> well, your English is now very proper, and so is Khabib's, and he's back on the proven ground here tonight, again trying to prove himself as one of the pound-for-pound pound greatest fighters on this UFC roster. All right, so here he is, the UFC featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. It's a title he always thought he would have. He just needed the opportunity, and you all saw what he did, and out classic the all-time great Max Holloway. Alexander Volkanovsky is the total package. We make a lot about his rugby league career, and at one point, he was a 214-pound athlete who was an absolute marauder, but now it has felt 145 pounds. He truly has every skill for fitting a long-reigning champion. This division has a bunch of killers in it, and right now, they're all chasing the bull, man, Alexander Volkanovsky. And now our tail of the tape for this lightweight scrap. Both fighters are 31. Nurmagomedov is four inches taller. Volkanovski will have a one-inch reach advantage. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a grappler holding a professional record of 29 wins, no losses. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of the Republic of Dagestan, Russia, Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! Out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 25 wins, 2 losses. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Alexander, the great Volodovsky! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Great. All right, here we go. Another big night for the MMA leader from Las Vegas, Nevada's T-Mobile Arena. Been a lot of seminal moments in this building. I can think of one. It was a big one for me at UFC 226. But John, also UFC 200. I've got to stand across the cage from Anderson Silva in that arena. This is a place where big fights happen. Oh, late defense on the takedown and scrambles to his feet. Nicely done. All right. Looks like he's trying to set up a takedown here. There's the attempt. Big punch lands over the top. I was going to follow this 
Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Fighters back to their feet here. Oh, and he finally gets the takedown now. So what do they say? If you try, try again. If, if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. And this guy is the poster boy for that saying, because he shot many takedown attempts, and he finally has secured one. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. And he landed the right hand there. All right, close guard now. You got to be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Volkanovski. All right, dominant position for him here, full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, better start moving those hips, DC. Oh, you got to start moving those hips. What you should do initially, right, is start to push at the knees. Push at the hips, create some distance, shrimp, and try to recollect half guard. Half guard sucks, but it's much better than being mounted fully by your opponent. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They He's attack on bar now. You got to recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you got to move him off and you got to cover. You can't be off to an angle. much earlier in the round, but he didn't want to rush it. He stayed patient, let the setup do its thing, and ultimately the submission materializes organically late in the round. High-level stuff out of that young fighter here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it, Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 24 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an arm bar, Habib All right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was very tough fight. But he knew that if he did everything right, he could get to his position, which is the crown, and he would be able to find a finish by submission tonight. He did just that. is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your poison. He has so many different chokes in his arsenal and has been a master of getting these fights exactly where he wants them. There are black belts, there are guys like this who can do jujitsu at a level that not many people, regardless of the time spent, can truly get to. His understanding of position is truly unbelievable. He always has the frame. The moment you start to press into him, he's always underhooking, always looking for the next escape route, but not to get back to his feet. Right. He wants to go from bottom to top. If he's in the top position, you are constantly, constantly in danger. Don't think he can't submit you from the bottom. Right. But his position of choice will always be in the top position sitting yes. in that beautiful half guard. Yeah, his striking also has improved a lot, but no secret as to what he'll be trying to do in this matchup tonight. 
All right, so here he is, a man who needs no introduction. GSP, wildly popular, not just in his native Canada, but around the world. Many people, DC, believe, pound for pound, that George St. Pierre might be the greatest UFC fighter of all time. He is one of the greatest fighters of all time. If there was an MMA Mount Rushmore, George St. Pierre would be on everybody's list of top five fighters of all time. Just an ability to mix everything together. He was truly the evolution of mixed martial arts. Wrestling, striking to the grappling. The guy that did everything and did everything well, and it made the level of mixed martial arts raise because everyone was trying to catch GSP. And I got good news right next to him on that Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. The Canadian is 39. The Brazilian is 40. He is three inches taller. He will have a one-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the official introductions, we set it inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 13 wins, two losses, and two draws. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a member of the UFC Hall of Fame. Boys Gracie. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 26 wins, two losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former USC welterweight champion, George Okay, guys, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. The fighters touch gloves. Fighters back to their feet now. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's gonna be. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes, you need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture. And rain down big strikes really matter. Very few guys now are committed to ground and pound as they were in the past. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pat. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. 20 seconds now remain in the round. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. 
All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position up the bottom. All right, let's look back at some of the action. DC, your good friend Mark Coleman, the godfather of the ground and pound, would be proud. He'd be very proud. He'd be very proud with the way that he showed his ability to use his grounding pound. He didn't waste any action. He did everything he needed to do. He was able to posture. He was able to control risk. He did everything perfectly in his approach in that ground and pound sequence. Under three minutes now to go on the round. That one's like hit. Nice fight. Way to hide that leg kick. Oh, he lands a huge knee to the body. Unable to land with that punch. All right, single collar tie now. Looks like he's trying to set up a takedown here. There's the attempt. Lands a lancing right hand upstairs. Another one. Yep. Up oh, and the left hand. Oh, he lands a massive kick here. Big head kick. And they separate. Good punch. Knee to the body. Gracie gets caught by that straight hand. Oh, and he defends another takedown there, so it looked like a pretty good entry, but once again, unable to get involved. Great balance, great awareness, moved the head back inside, turned that double into a single, crawled and got away from his opponent. Great job. St. Pierre's strike there is blocked. Nice job by the defense. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Big ball to punch land. Now he gets back to range. Gracie's got the tie clinch now. And that's the end of round number two. All right, a lot of high-level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. Third round underway. You got to check these low leg kicks. Well, you didn't see a lot of the body work from him in the earlier rounds, but he's certainly getting after it here. Big shot to the body connects there. We'll see if he can follow it up. Oh, the kickboxing chops on full display with that offering nicely done. Beautiful kick landed by this man. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position up the bottom. And this might just be a matter of time. Brilliant submission defense there. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. I mean, how many can he take? Useful strike there, the ground and pound on point tonight. Working off of his back here, looks like he may try to hip escape. 30 seconds now to go in the round. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. All right, so he postures up here, and now he figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position.
All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a Telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my Telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. All right, next round is now underway. Previous round, not necessarily a tough act to follow. Pretty good, not good. Pretty good round, but not the best round. Sometimes that's what you get when you have fighters that are so evenly matched. Dig and kick. Big that knee D, lands there. That knee hurt him. Gracie's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. He lands a big knee to the body. Got the single collar tie. Takedown defense holds up. And they separate. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three-piece, uh, no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the <laughs> whole platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike left now. He got his foot on the hip, and now he's throwing up a triangle attempt. He's going to try to move his left arm across to get pressure on the choke. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he go parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to go. And this might just be a matter of time. Wow. And now he's inside control. 20 seconds left. Well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon, both guys fought. You ready? You ready? It is the fifth and final round. Big kick lands. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bears watching. That's going to hurt this opponent. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? Down defensively here as he stays upright. Double leg takedown, no good. Gracie's got the tie clinch. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, the master of the transition. Nice scramble. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. GSP going for the leg kick. He does not connect. 90 seconds to go to decide this one. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. Oh, now he's in trouble. What a beautiful Kimura finish by this great fighter. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain. When you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another one. 
it's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's all your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're gonna break your shoulder. That's why you have to tap. All right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlight. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee, at two minutes, 47 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by tap out, George Rush St. Well, what an incredible result here tonight as you see the winner there celebrating his victory by way of submission. And they put so much stock into finishing this fight. They felt like to really spin his career forward, they needed to not just win but get the finish, and they certainly got it tonight. They got the finish. He's such a terrific grappler. Every time he's on his back, he looks for submissions over and over again. Eventually, he found one tonight and got the desired result.